Okay. So we'll continue our discussion of fractions today. We'll talk today about proportional reasoning, which is a major application of fractions. Like Suppose you have a recipe that calls for two onions, a teaspoon of chili powder, and then some other stuff. But you only have one onion and you don't want to go out, so you have the recipe. Well, if you can only have one onion, reducing the number of onions by one does not reduce the number of teaspoons tablespoons of chili powder by one, if you have the number of onions, you should have the amount of chili powder. So let's talk further about this. So a proportion is just a ratio. It's one number divided by another number. But instead, of writing A divided by B, we indicate a proportion by A colon B. And um, because A ratio, or rather a proportion, is really another way of asking, um, of talking about fractions. We can ask if two proportions are the same. We can ask if the proportion A to B is the same as the proportion of C to D. And to do that, we need a good way of deciding whether fractions are equal. Because proportions are fractions. And to decide if a fraction is equal, Oh, there are a few things you could do. You could get a common denominator, for example. But the most standard method is called cross-multiplication. Two fractions are equal if those products are equal. And then because a proportion is really a fraction, it, it, um, we can ask if two proportions are equal. And that's the same as asking if two fractions are equal. If A times D equals C times B. So as an example of this, um, you've 
probably noticed that um, elementary education skews heavily female. We might ask the following. We might say in the general population, the number of men equals the number of women. How would we write that? Well, we could write the proportion men holding, what am I? Suddenly my spelling, men holding women. We could also, if we prefer, write women to men. Men to women, women to men. This is going to give us the same amount, I mean, the same information in the end. And what does it mean if we write that this proportion in the general population is one to one? Well, for every man, there is one woman. Now, let's say But instead of the general population, we're looking at kindergarten teachers. And let's say, because I believe it's true, that there is an imbalance in the sexes of kindergarten teachers. We might write one golden head. And that's saying that for every one man in this profession, there are ten women. And now the answer is probably pretty evident, but we can ask ourselves, are the male and female proportions among kindergarten Teachers, the same as in the general population. So we've got This proportion, men to women, and we're saying that in general, that proportion is one to one. But in the kindergarten, that proportion is one to ten, and we are asking if those are the same. 
And I always, I won't say cheat because what's that me? Who am I cheating? But I can never remember the equality for when we just have proportions. I can never remember that off the top of my head. So what I always do is go back to fractions. That first proportion represents the fraction one over one. That second proportion is the fraction one over 10. And then I can cross multiply. And 10 certainly is not the same as 1. So I can answer that this proportion is not the same. And I mean, I don't want to get too heavy in this class, but you see proportions talked about a lot in this context in regards to like racial or gender inequality. Like, if you look at the proportion of Black um, citizens of this country versus white citizens of this country, and compare it to the proportions of Black presidents to white presidents, those proportions are not the same. And we can say that Black people seem to be underrepresented in that office. So um, let's do a less, uh, less serious example. Let's look at figurines. Those for action figures. So, let me see, um, let's say, what's the proportion of someone's arm length to someone's height? I don't know the answer to that, so I'm just going to say, well, my arm goes down about halfway to my leg. I'm going to estimate that this proportion is about one to two. For every foot of arm length, I should have two feet of height. So let's ask first, no action figures here. If someone is six feet tall, how long is That person's arm. So we're looking at the proportion arm length to height, and we're told that that proportion is one to two. And we're told someone's height. We're told that somebody is six feet tall, and we want to know that person's arm length. Well, the proportions are supposed to be the same. And again, I can never think of this 
in terms of proportions, at least not without a lot of difficulty on my part. I have to think of it as fractions. I want the fraction one over two to be equal to the fraction. This unknown arm length over six. Let me, let me use A instead of a question mark. So how long does somebody's arm have to be for that proportion to hold? Again, the best way to think of this is probably cross-multiplication. There are other ways. But if we say that 6 equals 2 times A, we can divide both sides by 2, and we can get... Um, what this person's arm length should be, which is probably, uh, probably my proportion is a little off. I don't think my arm's a yard long, but anyway, we've solved the problem. Somebody who's six foot tall should have a three foot long arm. So, if you uh, are into kind of a collector scene, you often hear about scale models. And when a model is called scale, what that means is that the proportions of the model are the same as the proportion of the actual thing. So, let's do one of the problems from the homework. A Boeing 747 is 230 feet long and 195 feet is its wing span. And now, let's say that we have a scale model. And the scale model is 40 centimeters long. What will be the wing span of this scale model? Let me call our calculator up because we are about to you to need it. What? No, wrong program, not the diagnostics but the calculator itself. So while that calculator is loading, let's set this up. So because this is a scale model, these ratios ought to be the same. We're given the length and we're given the wing span. We can talk about the ratio of the length to the wing span. If possible, um, we probably want the smaller number first and the bigger number second, just out of convention. So let's talk instead about the ratio of the wing span to length. One hundred ninety five 
feet of wingspan correspond to 230 feet of length. And over here, an unknown amount of wingspan corresponds to 40 centimeters of length. And again, although this colon notation is conventional, when it comes time to actually work with proportions, I think writing them as fractions demystifies a lot of this. 195 over 230 should equal So 195 times 40 equals 230 times W. I don't think this class like says that it requires a calculator, but like a uh, just at least like a four function calculator, so you don't have to do all of this by hand, will at least be helpful. 195 times 40, and I know that nobody can see this, it's 7,800. equals 230 times W. And although we have not uh, got into the sections on algebra yet, our hope is that we can solve an equation like this. We can divide both sides by 230 and get W. And I don't think this is going to be anything nice. I think it's just going to be some kind of a messy, really, I get that, I guess the keyboard just isn't on, probably, some kind of messy decibel, 7,800 divided by 230. Yeah, 33.9, let's say 33.9 what? 33.9 centimeters. So again, um, what are the sort of applications of this? Um, we've talked briefly, but I don't think it's necessarily my place to get into sort of applications of social justice, looking at, you know, proportions of women and proportions of minorities in a group. Um, <laughs> It, on a day-to-day -day level, cooking provides another very common application of this. When you scale a recipe, you want 
some from Horfin. Between the ingredients. A remain the same. So again, about some I don't want to do all of the problems for you, but let's just take a look at one of the problems from out the homework. And almost nobody got this problem last time, so maybe it's a good problem for me to do. Let's say we have one teaspoon mustard seed, three cups, Chopped tomatoes, one and a half cups chopped scallions, and three and a fourth cups. of beans. So um, that's what the recipe is supposed to be. But you only have three cups of beans. So how would you adjust this recipe um, to keep the proportions the same. Well, what we probably want to do, I mean, the proportions, um, we can look at are the proportions between the original and the scaled recipes. And in the original recipe, there's three and a fourth cups of beans versus the scaled recipe where there are only three cups of beans. And that's just for a second. Let me label this first of all. Let's see how we can do this as painlessly as possible. Let's look at the scavens and let's go look at this in some detail. The original recipe. Calls for one and a half cups of scallions. How many cups of scallions does this scaled recipe call for? So your calculator, I don't think, is going to like it if you try to type in three and a four. So once you start doing stuff that requires a calculator, you kind of have to leave mixed numbers behind and either use decimals or fractions. Let's use decimals. 3.25 to 3. Well, 
1.5 to some unknown constant s. We want all of these proportions to be the same. So we want 3.25 to 3 to be the same as 1.5 to s. And now, um, there are hundreds of sort of math professors wincing here because you really, it's not considered good form to mix um, decimals and fractions like this and to have a decimal in the numerator, but your calculator isn't going to care. We cross multiply 3.25 times S is 3 times 1.5. And three times 1.5, that should be what? Four, uh, an enormous hypocrite, because in spite of doing all of that stuff, like addition and multiplication by hand, my first instinct is always to go to technology. Three times 1.5 is 4.5. So the number of scavens is 4.5 divided by 3.25. And Let's see, 4.5 over 3.25. Again, I don't think this is going to be any, anything nice. It's not really, let's say, 1.4. I mean, we're cooking. How accurate can we be? Probably not accurate to a hundredth of a cup. So let's say 1.4. And now the other ingredients. And we could just repeat all of this work. That's probably not how most people think of scaling ingredients, though. Like if if we were if we had a nicer problem, like if we were going from four cups to two cups, we wouldn't be doing any of this work. We just think, well, we need to have all of our ingredients if we're going from four to two. But let's try to sort of get a handle on that idea. The idea of these ratios being the same says that, let me see. 3.25 over 3 is the same, or should be the same, as 1.5 over 1.4. We're going to get some rounding error here, so they won't quite 
be the same, but this ratio should be about 1.08, or I mean, for kitchen purposes, about 1.1. Let me, I always think there must be a way to erase on the whiteboard that isn't manually touching every single line, but if there is, I've never discovered it. So this ratio, should be about 1.1. 1 .1. And this provides a way of doing these problems that isn't torturously compare every ingredient to the beans. You know, we compare the scallions to the beans. The next thing we do could be to compare the tomatoes to the beans. But another way of thinking about this is that this ratio is always supposed to be the same. This ratio is always supposed to be 1.1. 1 .1. So let's just solve for that. No need to think about the beans again. We know that this is the ratio we want to have. Again, we don't worry about the feelings of all of the professors who bored us, you shouldn't be have fractions and decibels together because we're about to plug this into our calculator and then the fraction will go away. Three divided by 1.1, .1, about 2.7. And when we then look at the mustard seed, well, there's supposed to be a teaspoon. We don't know how much there actually is, but the ratio is supposed to be One point one and we can solve for M by doing a little division. Uh, one divided by one point. One about point nine. I mean, it did occur to me I didn't want to, to change up what I was doing in the middle of the problem. If you wrote the ratio in the opposite order, it might have been a little more convenient. If instead of original to scaled, I looked at scaled to original, 
but we'd have got into the same place in the end. And that, in a nutshell, is proportional reasoning. The other place you see ratios all the time is bounds. Like, when you question. Yeah. So how do you know to do the scallons or whatever they're called after the beans to get the ratio to plug everything else into that number? Um, like, why couldn't we have started? Like, would it have been different if we'd done the beans and then the tomatoes or, like, the beans and then the mustard seeds? Or, like, it would not have different? been different. Okay. There was no order to this problem. I just did them in a random okay. order. Okay, that makes sense. Any other questions? Then let me get, let's see, I posted, there's, so there's proportional reasoning homework. And then I posted some, uh, what was it? Messing with fractions, addition, and subtraction homework. I do have one that's bigger. Sorry. Um, so I don't know if people already have 6.2 or need 6.2. I'll just, yeah. I guess, pass it out. And if you already have it. And yes, let me. Can you do an extra one of those to add a case and so forth? Let me put this through rows first. Um, Proportional reasoning. Yeah. And 6.2. And I can 